let us start. As others come, we'll, we'll invite them. So I call the meeting to order. Uh, as we said each time, every time the, the meetings are being recorded, audio and video. If you would like to get a copy of any of the proceedings, we have these little green cards here. Ruth is mm -hmm. holding one up. So go get yourself one if you want to go find the, what's being recorded. Pass it down. Uh, Jim, please. <clears throat> and the next item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, we don't see any people from the public, but we do have a counselor here. And so we would love to hear from him. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm speaking from the public as, as a member of the public, not as an official member of the joint committee or anything, but just as a counselor who's been interested in this and uh, been following what you've been doing. I, I came to thank you, number one, for the work you've been doing. And some of you, I begged to be on this and said it would be like two hours of work or some ridiculous amount of three with Dan. And, uh, I knew it was going to be longer, and, but I wanted to thank you, and I also, again, not officially, this is just as one counselor and one individual, as I've been following this, and I realize there's a lot of work left to do in terms of, to, if you do go ahead and develop an actual plan, what are the details of that plan, what would make this a fair um, new enterprise fund in terms of who pays what, and how you do all of that, and I realize that there's a lot of work to do on that. Again, unofficial, I would consider it quite valuable and, um, and, and would say that you've already done a lot of work if I would encourage you to take a formal vote sometime soon, which would be to either recommend or not recommend that we set up an enterprise fund. Even before you put all the details, you could write some caveats to that saying, if a fair and equitable system were put in place, this committee believes that X, Y, and Z. That would be very helpful to us moving forward, even if you are, do not have the time that I think might be required to flesh out all of the details. The other thing that would be extremely helpful as it moves forward to us and the uh, joint committee would be if you were not able to, and I'm not sure, I'm just saying if you were not able to, given the timeline and giving some of you saying, look, I've done enough work on the committee and the committee needs to disband or whatever, to have the work you have done, which I know is you know, quite considerable, to pass that on. So I just want to say there's a lot of value in what you've already done. And I thank you for doing that. If you could take that vote, that would be great. The suggestions and the other information, the research that you guys have already done, even if you are not able to, for whatever reason, to put that into a, a system that you present to us, just getting that forward to us would be very valuable. And, and us, you mean? The Joint Committee. Joint and, then, committee. and then from there to whoever would take it the next <laughs> level. I guess I'm saying, I know for some of you, because I've spoken to you, there's a sense of, my God, we got so much work, and we're frustrated, we'll never get it done. I'm kind of coming in to say, you have done a lot for us when we first thought of this. Uh, committee happening, and I know there's a lot more to do, and I actually would hope that it could happen, that we get from you a recommendation and a, a whole system put in place, because you've researched and said, this is what we believe would be helpful, that would be fantastic. But if you're not able to, you've done a lot. Does anybody around this table like to talk to our counselor talking as a private citizen? Or would you like We're to private talk to counselor. as a counselor? <laughs> you can do it either way, in my opinion. Uh, no, I, I want to say I think that uh, um, what you're going to see from this committee, and I'm not speaking for the committee, but for myself, is that you're going to see recommendations. The true plan will be, will be developed by the city council because you're going to do the hearings. And there'll be several public hearings. And there'll be recommendations from the public with whatever we recommend, one way or the other. And it's going to have to be the final decision of the city council as to the exact plan. We can put a template out there, but the exact plan, yeah. you know, it won't look like the same thing when you get finished with it. And we know that. But we can recommend a way, I think. That's why we're all asking that you run again in the fall and serve on the <laughs> As well as the two other accomplishments. Second, next one. All in favor? 
Is there is there anybody else around the table? Ruth, you wanna? Yeah, what I'm hoping that we get together and present is at least two recommendations because we have a, a spectrum of recommendations. So I'd like to see one on one end, one on the other end of our recommendations to encompass all our work that we can give to you neatly presented and organized that encompass everything we've done that you the, you, the joint committee and then city council can take and understand everything that we've worked on and discussed. Chris? Uh, we, and we, we, we began discussing a little bit last time what, what we thought we, it was going to look like when it came out. And I think one of the things uh, that we'd like to include, in addition to whatever recommendations or range thereof, was some sort of uh, narrative about how we got to where we got, because it will help you understand some of the issues that we see, yeah. uh, and also some of the things that we feel are ha are either unresolved or inadequately resolved, because they, at some point, are going to involve a political political component that doesn't that doesn't fit our mandate. So, so we're heading in. I think we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. Bob, any comments? No, I don't. That's fine. David? No, I don't. Uh, a comment I'd like to ask, are you expecting a uh, presentation to the city council in the form of uh, uh, somebody to stand up and, and give it? Or are you, do you want this transmitted uh, electronically? Do you want it written, uh, smoke signals on a scroll? What, okay, what's your again, pleasure? I am not here in the, to, I don't represent the whole committee. I would say my personal pleasure as a councilor. The next place this is going to go, this ad hoc committee is under the jurisdiction of our joint committee of the and city council. My expectation would be that this material will come to us. And I would leave it to you, whatever you think would be the best way for us to catch both the, I love the idea of a narrative involved of how did you come to where you came, whatever you think would be the best way for us, would be my personal thing, for us to understand that, understand the recommendation. If it's a few of you coming to the meeting, if it's all of us coming to one of your meetings, if it's a presentation, a PowerPoint, a, 72 millimeter film, a Cinemax, <laughs> whatever you have, whatever you think would be best for under, for us understanding what you came to as your recommendations and how you got to them so we knew that understanding. So we don't have the same, we kind of like the arguments on both sides. That would be helpful. Well, you know, you appointed the people around this committee, so you certainly have the power to recommend, and I am asking you for a recommendation I'll tell you of what, what you what would like. What I will like. do is I will take that back to the joint committee meeting on Monday. We, we, we on Monday, we will, I will bring that up because I have no power and no would feel complete. I mean, if we were to take a so vote Monday, to show up, or, on Monday I'll do it. I'll yeah. go to the joint committee yeah. and ask. Okay, so yeah. that's yeah. Right. you need a okay. clear direction. Okay. You know, tell us what you want. And, okay. and, and it seems to me it must be in electronic format, among other things. However, but let them, we'll let you know. Let's. Yeah. And, a, and a time. Okay. A date. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Right. We meet on Monday and we'll let you know. Okay. Now, would you like to speak as a counselor now that you've spoken as a, a private citizen? No. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it. He hasn't been on record in eight years. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's on record <laughs> now because we <laughs> have right over there. And it's, uh, it's, going to, it's going to be on 3D TV tonight. <laughs> Uh, Terry, would you want to speak as a private citizen, or, or what's... No, I... You're listening. I'm listening. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, uh, since I don't see anyone else here for public comments, let's move on. Uh, we, we have two sets of minutes, I hope, that we need to approve, and I see somebody smiling. Is that suggesting that we don't have... I was sets? smiling when I walked in here. I wasn't looked up at There will be three sets of minutes to approve at the next meeting. Uh, uh, the city uh, engineer is not done any minutes this week. Uh, He's been busy doing lots of other stuff for our task force. No. Uh, uh, can the committee deal with that? Will the yeah. committee deal with that? Yeah. 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 So be it. So be it. Let the record read. May I? Uh, I'd like to say something. Uh, and I said this at the last meeting. And I want to correct, in case anybody got the wrong idea. When we were talking about the flood control dike, uh, I made the statement that the people outside the dike don't get any services from us. We don't protect them. And that's what I meant. We don't protect them. I didn't want anybody to think that we 
don't have a stormwater collection system on Island Road and a stormwater collection system on Riverbank Road and a stormwater collection system at the foot of the hill for the fairgrounds on the other side of the dike. So I want, you know, I didn't mean that. So I want to make that clear. Let the record read that, the correction. I'm not sure. It's very helpful to know. I did not know either any of those three systems well, were in those locations. Yeah. And those probably help keep that from flooding well, early. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, absolutely. And it takes care of them during rainstorms. Right, yeah. Uh, the next item six is we've had this each time and we said we would have this. Are there any new, what I have chosen to call feed algorithms from committee members that somebody would like to put on the table? Uh, item seven is format for the committee report to the city council and DPW Joint Committee. I think that Paul kind of has dealt with that for us, that he'll get back to us. Yeah. Unless the committee wants to talk about that more. Should we move on? Yeah. Uh, we had a report from the planning department last time, and I don't think we're going to have one this time. I don't see anybody here, so let's let's move on from that. So now we come to uh, discussion of credits and exemptions. Um, and pass I, these around. And I think Chris is our uh, credits presenter, and, yeah, and advocate and so forth. Okay. Uh, no, actually, this is different, and it's actually I'm zeroing in on a, a final format. Uh, it's still geographically oriented, but I'm going to lose that in the next version. I spent a lot of time looking at two in particular: uh, Newton and uh, and uh, Richmond, Virginia. Um, Newton is intriguing in that it's it's is dead simple, both in the fee structure, um, uh, where there's a flat rate. Um, for non-resident, for residential and non-residential properties. Um, residential are charged $6.25 per quarter for each water and sewer bill they receive, and non-residential are charged $37.50 per quarter on, um, and only properties with public sewers receive a charge. So it's, a, it's as simple as fee structure as you could possibly imagine. I was informed by Jim at last night's BPW meeting that they're revamping the whole system because they're not making enough money. And so I raised this, then they, um, I raised this because um, part of the problem that I see with the simplicity of these sy systems um, is that they're not, they're not necessarily going to be uh, great revenue raisers. But I'm not really looking at the revenue side. Um, they, they then look at, um, they treat residential and non-residential effectively the same way with regard to credits. And they look at f effectively the issue of runoff and um, runoff into the public system and long-term stormwater management, i.e. keeping water from getting into the system um, in too quick a manner. Um, and they have a cap on the total percentage of the stormwater fee for a property of up to 75%. Um, they acknowledge that different um, uh, different properties will have different run up, runoffs, and they have a series of formulas uh, that look uh, that are based around a um, an on-site storage facility. Um, moving on to Richmond, so they, me, they have a cap. It's really a minimum fee. Yes, that's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. Not you. The most you can pay is sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. The most you can, least you can pay, is a quarter of your regular bill. It's exactly. That's a good way to look at it. Um, in Richmond, they have a combination um, fee structure based on um, for not for single family residential based on parcel size uh, with a set annual fee, a tiered set annual fee, uh, similar to what we see in in. Uh, in Terry's presentation. And then for multifamily non-residential, they go to an ERU system. Um, and they offer actually a minimum fee. They tell you specifically that you can't pay less than $25. Um, they offer a series of, of, 
um, non-residential multifamily property credits. They're not, they, um, they don't do a lot of crediting for residential. Uh, but they, the, the interesting thing down at the bottom of what is page three, right above miscellaneous, is the list of exemption. They offer full waivers of charges are granted for the following. Undeveloped properties, public streets and roadways, cemeteries and city of Richmond owned properties are excluded from paying the stormwater fee. And the reason I point that out is because that effectively, to my mind, is the, is the commons issue. Um, they treat it as an exemption, but effectively they, 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 that's how they've, they've addressed the commons, the commons uh, thing. I have not seen that, uh, that type of language in any of the other cases that I've looked at where there was this sort of broad, band, broad sweep exemption of what looks like commons. There, are, there, are, there have been targeted exemptions, cemeteries being the most common. Um, and then at the bottom, I, I've, I've just this is where we're going ultimately, is that there's going to be a list referenced probably of the types of both either credits or incentives that I've seen out there. The incentives tend to be, uh, and again, this is a general statement, um, the credits tend to be targeted at things that are larger than single family, while the incentives tend to be things that are most applicable to single family. And I think that's a, a probably a good divide um, in that the incentive things look at sort of um, infrastructure improvements that not necessarily would would not necessarily have to be maintained or or um, inspected, as opposed to the larger the larger projects where you would want to have um, some sort of um, uh, either relicensing, refeeing, or reinspection over time because they actually they actually uh, uh, contribute. Quite significantly to um, the way the way waters the way the water uh, flood waters are treated stormwaters are treated. So um, this is this is still far from a a, um, a perfect product, but I'm I think I'm headed in the right direction, which will be um, a list of options with sort of the pros and cons. Um, I think one of the things that I, in the last section guidelines um, is looking at some of the criteria that some of the cities use. Uh, they seem to more often than not incentivize um, good behavior on the tops of multi on the on the on the types of multifamily or or non residential um, and where they where they carve out loopholes it tends to be around individual single family or 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 small residential. Um, I understand the reasons for that. I think it has to do with ma uh, m it, m you know maintaining. Uh, uh, the, uh, the the viability of whatever systems are in place and the, and the idea of inspections and that type of thing, um, uh, but I, I think there are other inspection uh, regimes, uh, voluntary inspection regimes that might be applicable. And I also think that from a political standpoint, leaving out individual single family is just a bad idea. Uh, I think that particularly in a community like Northampton, where there is this spirit of communal participation, that this is one of the areas where even if it's a nominal reflection of improvement of, of, of property or residence, uh, that that's going to that's going to hold us in good stead um, as we try and make the case for the creation of a new of a new fee structure. So, um, if I do turn this into a recommendation, it will almost certainly include. It will absolutely certainly include some form, probably of incentivization for individual uh, single family residences as well. So that's where I'm right now. Any questions or comments? And if you have any thoughts over time, once you get a chance, I'll send this around electronically tomorrow okay. um, so you can have a more time to look at it. If you want to direct any questions or comments to, re to me directly, that's fine. Let's just start Not right now. Okay. Yeah, it's new. I'm sorry. I got to stop doing this on Thursday morning. <laughs> Alex? Um, I'm curious if you got further into the, the detail, particularly um, monitoring maintenance of, of the kinds of retention ponds, uh, dry yeah. wells, oh. all that kind of stuff. Who does that? Is there a licensing? It varies. In, and in fact, I was, I was just talking to um, MJ Adams about this last night. They actually, it, in, their, in their, um, their sites, they are required by law to do something on site. Um, I can't remember what the name of the, her outfit is. For maintenance. Yeah, but it basically it's it's a self it's a self regulating thing where they have to send in proof of you know proof of maintenance on an annual basis. An inspection. Yeah. How, yeah. Habitat Habitat for Humanity. So they self inspect. 
Um, I, I don't know how viable an option that is, which is why I'm, I'm looking at the incentivization of green infrastructure, like things that, uh, you know, green roofs and that type of thing, where once you put it in, you're going to want to maintain it yourself just because that's what's going to make it work, as opposed to um, storage facilities, that type of thing, where maintenance is going to be critical and, and, and you're, going to, you're probably going to want to have some sort of inspection regime to make sure that they're still in compliance with whatever it is you've got them to agree. Um, but I'm still learning. Yeah. So. Yeah. Jim lost control. He wants another yeah. comment. Uh, I think that uh, we're going to find that uh, the city itself is going to have to inspect these. We found in the past that these retention ponds that are being put in by some of the builders are not being taken care of. And we have to, we would have to inspect them. And excuse me when I keep saying we, I have 42 years of public works. So I mean public works. Public works have, would have to inspect them and have to write a enforcement letter to see that these retention ponds and whatever incentives they use are kept up with. That's the only way we can do it. Well, okay. I, would, I just want to follow up on that. I mean, assuming, even if we don't offer credits and, and, and anything like that, that there are going to be moving forward based on plan, you know, planning commission work and that kind of stuff, requirements for this type of on-site capacity. I mean, that's just, it's just part of the code now. Do we have a, the ability, and are we performing those kinds of inspections now? Do we, does anybody know, or is it just you're required to put them in, and after that, this, it's sort of the process ends? I would like to ask Jim. I would love to say something. <laughs> Please. So some of the Habitat for uh, Humanity housing and, and other development projects within the city. That's MD Adams. Right, that's MD Adams. No longer. Used no, to be. No longer. That's what she was talking about, I think, no when you longer. talked to Jim. Yeah. They have to get a stormwater permit from the city. And part of the stormwater permit is an agreement that has certain requirements for operation and maintenance of the systems that they build. They're obligated to hire a professional engineer themselves. Reports are supposed to be done based on a, a PE's inspection. Reports to be submitted to the city um, public works department in accordance with um, the agreement that they have. Um, when they, they uh, sign that after they receive their stormwater permit. So there is a system in place where these happen. Um, it's not foolproof. We don't inspect these systems. Um, if there's a problem with the system that we find out about, sometimes we get involved in trying to rectify a problem and make sure that the, the homeowners association, condo association, or developer, or whoever it is, business, that they um, comply with the terms of their permit. So there's a system in place. The obligation is third-party professional engineer hired by um, the person that owns the stormwater system. So mm -hmm. that's sort of what, what you have there. Does that help, Alex? Or? Well, not, I mean, I don't think it helps the city very much. I mean, basically sediment uh, accumulates at different rates in different places. And if you don't inspect it, a, a problem occurs. A problem occurs when flooding, you know, the flood, the, uh, the retention pond really doesn't work. It's already full of silt. There's no place for water. So. If you don't really look at them, then they don't. Then I don't see how you can uh, give. Them. I mean, they're obligated under the under their agreements to look at them and to maintain them. Not only to have them inspected by a professional engineer, but also to maintain them according to a schedule that's agreed upon with the city when the agreement signed. So all those things are detailed and enforceable. Enforceable, so, but but you don't enforce them. I mean, we don't have a mechanism to enforce it. I, I don't want to belabor this. I, you know, I think it will develop over time, particularly as it becomes a significant part of the infrastructure of the city. You're going to have to have inspection, particularly for large retention ponds, things that really make a difference. Somebody. Can have to. Well, I, I know from you know the business side, we have one that requires us to do <laughs> weekly, monthly inspections, and then the reporting. So, I mean, I think there's a way to enforce it. Right. And that may be the, you know, the compliance piece that we have to define. But I know we follow that. Thank you. Ruth? Any comment on it? Not right now. Okay. Um, no. I, I think two things, Chris. I think, number one, that you're right about having some modest residential incentives. That really will help build in support for this. Um, I also think that we have... Every community will say the same thing, but we have 
and unique institutions here that who are our good partners in stormwater management. And we want Smith College and the city of North Tampa and the VA and other places to do, to mitigate stormwater in every way they can. So there should be a system for big projects. I don't know what big it is, but big projects where they can come in and appeal for, apply for a, a substantial credit against a major expense, and that would reduce. So I think that for non-residential projects, there should be some kind of application system where you can apply for a 20 or 25 percent reduction, for instance, in your own stormwater bill because you're going to do X, Y, or Z. Or have done. Or have done. But that should, <coughs> yes. But there has to be a way we want to incentivize. There should be credits for what people have done and are doing, and there should be incentives, additional credits, for more forward-looking actions by our institutions. Yeah, and, and by and large, credits to me are recurring things, and incentives are one time. That's the way I've been. That's the way I've developed the language for it. But but anything that's sort of a twenty five percent off of your rate on an annualized basis, where you're where you're performing an ongoing function, yeah. I I I that's what I that's what I'm referring to when I say credit. Right. Yeah. Some in some credits are incentives, but when I say incentive, I'm really talking about a, sort of a one time, yeah. one time thing. But what I'm saying basically, I think, is I I want some some flexibility and creativity at the administrative level about major expenditures which help us out. David, uh, Chris, thank you for doing this. You're you're helping for me. You're helping shrink the fence that we're trying to get in. <laughs> uh, one question, actually, two parts is uh, I see developed properties and undeveloped properties. Did you drill down into what the explanation is? Really I didn't. Hard? I'll look into that more. And, and, and that may be something where we, we come up with a definition on our own. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. And if I may, you're talking about developed properties and undeveloped properties. The planning department has a, a law that they have <clears> to go by, and I think that should be available to Chris if he's going to look at this. Um, if they disturb more than an acre of land, they have to do thus and so, and a large development has to do thus and so. These are new rules and regulations that have come in when, when I was on the council. So those we should get from uh, Wayne Fighting. That would be great. Dan? I, just, I, I see a slippery slope here with the credits and exemptions at this point in our discussion. You know, we're really, we need to raise this enterprise fund. Mm -hmm. And in addition to the fund, we're going to need to raise a secondary fund for incentives and credits. Okay? Because <laughs> yeah, right. you still yep. need to have... Yeah. Got to have $2 million. So if it's $2 million, you're done. then we have to somehow plan for 2.3. Yeah. To apply, and those are great, and, and we can, I mean, that's almost a thing that can develop down the road. I really think we're, you know, we're, and not that it's, we, it's down the road. We're still stuck at the, yeah. the, the starting point here. Would you like to say that I called you on first? You hardly seen the paper, so that wasn't really fair to say you first, though. So we'll, we'll give you a second shot if you've got something to just sort of not necessarily on this issue. Something that is confusing me, and I don't, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to articulate this correctly, is that the fee that we are talking about setting up is to cover um, EPA regulation and um, upgrades in our infrastructure. And everybody, and this is all going to be one fee that we see on our bill. And we are talking about credits for the part that is only a quarter of that $2 million. No. No. Well, I mean, because the, the stormwater that we're talking coming, about yeah. coming off of residential and whatever, all properties, um, it's only about the EPA part of our problem, right? Or does residential stormwater mitigation affect our levy system and all of our upgrades that are necessary? So Can I? All, all part of it. 
Can I respond to that? Yeah. It depends on it. De it de yeah. yeah, I totally do. Do it depends on what type of mitigation you do. For instance, um, in the case of uh, Newton, they they talk about seven inches of rain per hour into a 500 gallon, blah blah blah. I mean, they're really talking about backing off the amount of water that goes into the stormwater system in a major event. So if you were going to look at something, it absolutely would. Um, if it's something along the lines of, you know, um, downspout buckets, probably on your average day, yes, but we're, are we really, when we talk about stormwater and, 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 and that type of thing, are we really worried about the average day? For the infrastructure part, we're worried about it all the time, but we're talking about, you know, that, that moment of surge, and in that case, those small things really aren't going to, you know. Yeah, I guess part of what I'm thinking is, is that this fee we're really setting up so that the city can start addressing infrastructure needs. And so if you can get credits to lower your bill and maybe even get your bill down to zero, that's, you're not helping with what is the larger issue, which is... You drink all your storm water. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think, I'm having trouble with it for that yeah. reason. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good point, and I think that's mm -hmm. why one of the things you do is you put a floor on what your bill is going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That so there you, should, you shouldn't be able to get credit to zero. Yeah. Right. 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 There should right. be a limit to the credit. And, and, and in all fairness, the only place where I've seen that is in the Richmond situation where clearly they've got concerns about industrial runoff into the, into the James River, and they do allow you to get to 100% if you are using a third-party wastewater management like treatment facility to, to clean your water before you dump it into the... So they're basically saying, if you, put clean, if you put clean water into the river, you're good to go. But that is like, it seems like a really unique situation. Bruce, yeah. um, I, I agree with you about credits for residential. I think Northampton is a huge residential area. And on top of all this, we've got to think about the public and what they're going to think when they look at all this. And they're going to see if they have a house that they can help with the whole situation to begin with. They can do something that's going to improve uh, the amount of rainwater that we're dealing with. And they're also going to help their bill. And it's going to go a long way toward making this whole thing palatable to begin with. And if we have, and it's an actually a cap, it's a, what would you call it, a cup, a four. limit? Yeah, four. four. Yeah. That they, they do have to pay a bill. It might not be a huge one. But the more work they do toward reducing the amount of rainwater that they have, the runoff that they have, the less they're going to pay. But they're still going to have to pay something. The better off we're all going to be in the long run. I mean, it, it does reduce what we're going to get. But I don't know how many people are actually going to go out and buy the barrels and put the strips on their gardens. It might not reduce what we're going to get that much. But it's going to look a lot more palatable. It's going to make it a lot easier for them to swallow in the beginning, even if it doesn't reduce how much we're actually going to get. I mean, is there a way for us to find out how many people or how much these cities actually lose because of credits? I haven't seen any estimates of that, but I haven't cracked open the books. All I've looked at is, like, their, their, their planning documents. If I you haven't... want some help, I can help you call. Maybe if we call some of these cities, we can actually find out if they lose a lot of money because of credits. Yeah, uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll take a look at take a look at their budgets and see if they have any light items or something like that uh, rather rather than spend the time trying to identify who we got to talk to. But but I appreciate your your help and if that's what we we ought to do then I'll definitely yeah, it's bring a thought, in, but yeah. if you need me just let me but know. But Dan, I, I mean I want to acknowledge where you where you are on this. I you're talking about raising more money rather than what the what the 2 2 million or whatever it is is going to be and and you know, uh, it may be that this is something that, uh, that the city council, for that reason, the city council doesn't want to, go, want to go about. But I, in my heart, I need to, I need to know that the options on the table. Sure. So that's where I'm. But I'm not going to be brokenhearted if, if you know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't play that way. I will say though that it, it having looked at, only looked at seven communities, um, all seven provide some sort of incentive. Not, not all, not all to single family, but, but that all, all provide some form of incentive. And I'm a single family homeowner. I want incentive. <laughs> Chris, so next week you're going to come back with a, uh, or whenever we decide to have the next meeting, uh, um, an amplified version of what we've got here? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, this is this is going to be a work in progress until we're done. 
So I'll put an action item down or agenda item for the next time. We'll go around this one more time, or maybe possibly more, but at least one more time. And Chris, do you have one here? That's Richmond. Go ahead. All the possible yeah, types okay. of credits and incentives? No, no I'm, I'm still, lear I'm still oh, learning. I'm still learning. Yeah. yeah. It, right now, it's still based on geography. That's I've decided that's the wrong model. It's going to be based on it's going to be based on a, a shopping list of what what you can do, and I'll probably reference who does it. But but I'm, I really want more of a, of a list of options. Alex, I'd be interested in, in how far back uh, cities go for credits. Um, the, the hospital, for instance, what comes directly to mind is within the last six years, I guess they. They spent, must have spent a little million dollars down there. Again, at the level that I'm looking at these things where we're talking about policies as opposed to what specific actions cities have taken, I, I don't know the answers for that. And I don't know that I have the wherewithal to, to do that kind of digging at the, at the, at the, at the case by case level. I'm really just looking at city policies, not, that, not where their history is on, on how this developed. I can tell you when they started doing it. And most of them are offering things going forward. But if somebody had gone into the city and attempted to, uh, you know, get some credit for past action, I, it's not the kind of search I'm doing. It's not going to come up. Okay. If you pay me a little more, <laughs> double, my, we could double, double my salary. Double salary. <laughs> you get the same salary that all of us around this table get. We'll double it. Two times zero is zero. I know. Some of the research I was. You know, looking through, there was no credit for past stuff. There was only things going forward. Another question I have is, do, does credits need to be part of the program going forward? Is it something that can become, you know, amendable after? Right. Because when, I get nervous when you talk about a cap, $2 million. You know, not knowing, A, if the priorities have all been set of what the need is over the next five or ten years, which I think is a huge thing, because when I just run the numbers in my head, I don't think $2 million is the number. I really don't think it is. Higher. And higher. <coughs> and if you go out there and put a cap on it right off, I don't know if that's the right thing to do because now you restrict yourself. And now if you have credits and you have all these other exemptions out there, I, I think you're going to find out that you're subject to, as I mentioned last week, you're going to fail. In my mind, one of the reasons we're going through all of this is that we're trying to get to the point we can develop a fair and equitable mm. fee structure. In order to do that, I think you have to think about in many cases, conflicting ideas and somehow come to a balance. And well, I don't think we've collected enough information yet to come to balance, but we're, we're grinding away at it. That's my perception of what's happening here. We're turning the crank and, and, and developing this. <clears throat> Are there more comments on this credit? Well, Rick, I, I do. One, one credit that I found looking was um, <clears throat> the, the utility actually purchasing some of the Infrastructure needed for some of these um, things, barrels, things like that. Yeah, and and uh, investing in that in some sort of large purchase scale where you know citizens have access because they're paying a bill, they can come down and get a a rain barrel because the impact is you know like you said day to day, not that not that right. much. Mm -hmm. But you know when the when the river's rising, it, it'll be good to be able to have that kind of storage yeah. uh, capacity. So. That's one thing I'd, I'd really like to see, and it would be a, a very visible, you know, touchable, mm -hmm. you know, result for, for what you're paying in as well. And, and it would, I think, you know, do the reputation of the city pretty well, too. Yeah. The city already has a program such as that, mm -hmm. and, and they do a lot of uh, distribution and so on. Yeah. So if I don't know what the charges for green barrels. Eighty dollars. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to see it as a grand scale kind of thing. As a freebie. Yeah. Well, I don't think it has to be a freebie, but I think that if you, you know, if you're buying it through the utility, they already know that you have it. You know, yeah. that that's a, a buck off or something like that. You know, yeah. the, the payback rate wouldn't be great, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. You know, a cup of water taken out by me and a cup by him and then by him. It, it adds, it adds up. up. It does. It does. So anything that a, even a small home can do is yeah. well worth it. Yeah. Alex? Uh, I guess I, I have trouble, and I'd be interested in if the cities that 
what you need to do to fulfill the building code, the kinds of stormwater structures that are required now to get a permit to have a project, seem to me not something you would get a credit for. I agree. Just part of the structure. Uh, I but I'd be interested in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we, this has come up a, a, in a couple of different ways, and the question is whether you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna punish people for obeying the law and 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 rewarding people who are reaching back to is this what I'm getting at? Like, I, I would say it's not a punishment. No, no, but uh, I mean that, uh, and I think we were talking one of the earlier meetings that mm -hmm. there's always something more you can do. Right. On that well, that's property. true. Yeah. So you know. I think having a zero start, you know, at the start line for everybody is is more appropriate than than you know what they needed to fulfill the permit to build anyways mm -hmm. uh, in the first place. So I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that up. Can we move to the the discussion of the commons and the fee structure? We've had a fair amount of discussion about this in the past and. I think we're likely to have some more tonight. Thank and you for your input, Jen, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate Thank you, it. Thanks, Chris. And and likely in the future. I don't think this is going to go away anytime soon. So does somebody want to start that discussion? Yes, I do. In fact, our excellent city engineer has done a remarkable job coming up with some definitions of the top. Not mine. Uh, I just typed them. You just type it. <laughs> well, these papers are going around. Let me, can I? I got to go in a bit, so we can. No, I'd like to, I'd like okay. to make this comment. I've gotten some commentary, both written yes, and from people about the potential conflict of interest that having the DPW represents in this uh, in these deliberations. And my view is this: uh, I think there are always conflicts of interests amongst ourselves and all kinds of things. But since the DPW does not have a vote here, since everything we've done is transparent, uh, it seems to me that although the potential for that conflict exists, we have managed it to the acceptable level, and that is not something we should worry about. We are likely to hear that commentary come up. But they've done a lot of work for us uh, at our request. Uh, uh, you know, not they haven't force fed us with information. The information we've got, we've asked. And so I wanted to make that comment quickly as we go forward, because this is yet another example of some work they've done for us. And if we'd gone out and done this on an independent contractor or hired somebody to do this, it would have cost us money, taken time. And so I think we've used them as a resource. I don't regard this as a problem. Some people do. I don't. Chris, okay. um, as. As the, the DPW's official representative on, on the task force, I'd, I'd like to speak to that as well. Um, I think that one of the things is you look around the nameplates here, you see that we've got geographic diversity, but we've also attempted to bring in some of the major stakeholders, the Chamber of Congress, Smith College. Um, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't have um, some form of, of DPW, BPW representative on the, on the commission, and I'm more than happy to stand up and say that at any given point, because I think it's an important constituency within this, and actually we're the only official city entity that's represented on, on the commission, on the task force, so. That's, you know, I, that, I, that was my reaction to, no, to I, that. I don't want to delay, belabor the point, but I think it's something that we should just put out on the table and recognize that this may come back to us in yeah. some future time. And if it does, mm -hmm. I think we've, yep. we're, <laughs> hey, I'm, boys. Pretty, I'm pretty comfortable dealing with it. Just, did, did, Emory, could I just ask you, could you define what that conflict might be? Well, I, I think of a, a unacceptable conflicts of interest where someone has a vested interest and no one else in the discussion knows about it, and that unknown interest plays to their advantage in one way or another. To me, that means an unacceptable conflict of interest. We don't have that here. I agree. We don't have it. We just don't have it. But some people have the perception, or may have the perception, one way to dispel perceptions is just to talk about it. And just say, we recognize there is the possibility. We've thought about it. We don't see it. We're transparent in what we do. Let's get on with it. And since it came to be from last week to this week, I thought I'd just talk about it. And I don't want to belabor it any more than this, other than to say that I want the record to read 
that we thought about it and we, we recognized it and we know how to deal with it. And, the, and comments, unless somebody else got another comment. Bob, your floor. Can I just speak to, I just want to speak just for two seconds about these sure. handouts, so you know what I did. This is really the main page. This, this one with the words kind of describes a couple of ideas about how the comments might be defined. These other tables, which have all the numbers that might make your eyes roll inside your head, are sort of the backup for these percentages. So this is really the one you want to look at, the one with the words. And then if you're wondering how we achieved the numbers to get to these percentages, they came out of these tables. So the backup is there if you want it. But I think Bob's going to speak to this front page. Exactly. So I... You can see what Jim prepared here. He prepared a, a, the maximum commons, all city, state, and federal properties, roadways, and right of ways. 39, almost 40% of the total impervious area. A maximum commons based on gross area is 27% for all the governments. That's federal, state, and local. Then there's the city commons. So there's the impervious area, which is 26.7% of the total impervious area. And there's gross area, which is 20%. So the city commons owns 20% of the gross area of the city. Is that right, Jim? That is what it says. Okay. <laughs> and so I've also been thinking about, I know there's been some resistance to the commons fee on the task force. I've been thinking about what's going to happen to that $400 city now. What's it? Four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand dollars. I thought that I said four hundred thousand. I said four hundred. Sorry. And so, remarkably enough, twenty percent of the city's total percentage of gross area times two million dollars is four hundred thousand dollars. So I think it'd be helpful for us to consider a model where the city actually puts in four hundred thousand dollars in cash, the general fund. And then we fund all the other things like in Terry and my model, where we have tiers for the residential properties, the small residential properties up to three acres, and then actual mapping and of all properties beyond that. Does that make sense? So what I'm proposing is a hybrid where the city itself pays the common fee. We voted against it. I know we did. I know we did. <laughs> but can I ask you a we're sort of stuck here. Have, can, can you, is there another example of a common fee in a, in a stormwater utility? I, well, I, many I, other cities use general fund revenues. No, no. I'm Just saying, is there, is there a specific, as we go about formulating right. this formula, it's, it's broken down into a common fee, and we're doing a lot of work trying to figure out exactly what yeah. those commons are. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other example? Not that I'm aware of. Me, I haven't seen one either. Yeah. And, and it, it's a very unique well, but, concept. But it, but, but it, 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 so we shouldn't call it the common speed. The city is still going to put in the same $400,000 that they put in now. I mean, and that means the general, tax the general fund will contribute $400,000. I think we're changing that the That was approach. an 8 to 2 vote. Okay. Last, I mean, yeah. I, I don't, want, <laughs> don't want to squash this. But we we've, we've gone through this twice. Okay. Well, and you know the commons. You know at this, we've talked about the commons a lot, and, and get stuck on this. The fundamental fundamentally, there's one place where this money's coming from, and you know everybody's brought it up in their own way. It's coming from everybody, yeah. but not this. You know, but not the city, and not you know, it's not coming from. Yeah. The city, and the only way, if we want it to be a general fund where it comes through property taxes, and that four hundred thousand, that twenty percent of the overall fee comes from purely property, property tax, tax right. payers, then we, we almost need to like it doesn't really matter because everybody else has got to pay it in its entirety. And my concern is when people hear about whatever we recommend, they're going to say, "What's happening?" That four hundred thousand dollars city puts in now. So this is what be one way to answer that. I know I've been I've spoken against it many times. So I'm really eating crow here to say, let's let the city put in four hundred thousand dollars in cash 
to the enterprise fund and, you, and get rid of the commons feature of my plan. Well, maybe we can ask one of the city councils what, what they would see as a budgetary step once this utility is in, in place. If that 400000 you know, is needed on top of it, you know, for maintenance yeah. and, and upgrades, then maybe that's where that 400000 goes. I, I don't know. He's gone. Oh, uh, <laughs> so Roof? Bad. My response would be let the city take that 400000 and put it to the schools or someplace else where they need it. The sewers. And, uh, yeah, right. and my response is, is the city doesn't pay anything and forget the commons. Okay. Go with one of the plans that okay. doesn't even include the commons because I personally don't believe in, in charging for the commons. I think we have enough to do just to pay for our own properties. And some of the plans, like my plan, comes up with the $2 million kind of goal that we have yeah. without even including them. Yeah. We, we pay for it regardless. That's the thing. It's not yeah. like it's an extra charge. It's just a different way of figuring it out. Yeah. So you'll pay either way. It is. Yeah. It either is. the comments yeah. comes in it or is. you pay more yeah. without the comments. Yeah, it's just yeah. that it's the when the public looks at some of the simpler formulas, they're going to be a lot more receptive to it because they can understand it. I know. Uh, I'm, I know. I apologize. I just it's a, a, have and, trouble and understanding gonna, the more complicated ones. Hands. Okay. Put your hand down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll slap your hand. Okay. How's that? Anybody got a comment here? David? Uh, thank you, Bob. I'm, I'm glad you're leaving at six. <laughs> 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 because you did propose the city coming out. Now you're coming back in and switching us and you're kind of muddying the waters. And, and in terms of the city the people asking that question, I think, leave at having that there to be a, a, a temperature raiser mm -hmm. on the 400 grand, I think, is a good thing because that's going to put the city council on uh, notice. It's not a, it's not an issue we have, but someone's going to come up with where is that other 400 grand, yeah. and that's the thing that they're going to have to deal with. Um, and for us, you know, we we need to stick to two million plus. Uh, Inflation, we need to stick to two million plus some other things, and we need to consider this cap reduction so we can end up at the two million. The four hundred grand that we should let that ship sail and that keeps that off the problem. And it will be. Okay. It will be a very hot topic. <coughs> we're Excuse gonna put that in our uh, Yes, it's gonna yep. be in the recommendation yep. that we discussed it. Okay. Well John? Talk about muddy in the water. <laughs> when you That's look at all the muddy here anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Well, when you look at Richmond, you look at Ohio, you look at Charlotte, you look at all these other cities that have gone through one of these enterprise funds. They all talk about public awareness and public education. We're not doing any of that. Now we do have the public here, but we haven't done any of the education. So we talk about an issue that David just brought up of you know when that question comes up, I get nervous proposing anything that hasn't been vetted through. Maybe that's just me as a civil engineer. I just get a little twisted by that. But I'm just concerned that if we're not fully in agreement as a committee and we haven't brought the public piece in, are we only going to create a disturbance later on when all these issues have to be... And our, our work will become really foolish. I mean, it's not, it's not going to have any merit because we haven't really put the front end work in place. So, talk about a budget issue, but I talk about public awareness. You know, we talked about the issue um, that Rick brought up of buying certain materials. That's a wonderful education tool. That will get lost in the process if we don't put that in our recommendation. Well, I'd like to go back to the charge that we were given. We were asked to develop as best as we could a mm -hmm. fair and equitable fee structure. Uh, whether that's good. politically acceptable or not, or mm -hmm. whether the, the citizenry will accept it, I think is beyond anything that we were charged with or we can do about it. I am personally frustrated that, mm -hmm. that there isn't more outreach, but given the charge we have, I, I don't yeah. see a, uh, a real way clear, and, and I predict there will be substantial energy in discussions, in subsequent discussions. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I predict the temperature will rise in the room when they have those discussions. I would argue that we are the first step in public outreach. I mean, we are the public representing regular <coughs> Northamptonites. 
I mean, we're, we just are the public. Like, this is the first step in public outreach. And it's their job then to go and do public forums. I mean, this is just step you mean one. The, the, the their job, city job. council, yeah, and okay, DPW, gotcha, joint gotcha, camp. I, yeah. I just, I think that this is public outreach. Yes. This is just exactly what we are. Alex? I agree with you. Uh, but John's other point, which I think is, is really valid, is the less unanimity we have, the less use this committee is. If we can't come to an agreement and come out with a pretty, with at least some recommendations that are that are consensus, that you really are not going to be a very effective body. I think that the work will really dissipate if we come, uh, and we may not be able to. But I think I don't think there's any vote here that you're going to take that one or two people aren't going to dissent. Well, that may be, but I think that that's. Mm -hmm. But, but, majority rules. But, but to speak to that a little bit, I, I agree with Alex, and, and that was why I had a little, a little sort of, when I got Emery's email, which was sort of arguing for, you know, 10 or 12 dissenting opinions, um, I, 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 well, <laughs> some, some change their mind in the middle of it. That's right. Twice. <laughs> Because for, for that very reason, which is if we can't come out of this, if we can't come out of this with A, I think, I, I think, we, need a, I think we need a program we can agree with just because otherwise it's not going to work. You know, um, it, it, it will be such a poor program that, that it's just not, it's not, it's not viable. Um, but also, it's going to be harder to sell. But, but um, I think, so I think we'll, as we talk about what, what the final report is going to look like, we do want to find a balance between the presentation of options and the force of recommendation because as was raised earlier on no matter what we do and even if we say this is just round one it, it's going to carry it's going to carry some weight it's going to carry some weight so i'm you know i'm 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 pushing for i i know we, we won't get x to zero but i'm pushing for you know x minus one or x minus two mm -hmm. that's, that's where i'd like to land i'd like to respond to the email i sent i just put that out as a proposition it's up to the committee to decide whether they want to do that. So I set the outside boundary condition that everybody could. It's up to this committee to decide how they want to deal with that. It's it's not up to me. I mean, I uh, but I figured that's the simplest place to start. Yeah. We'll give everybody a say, and then let the committee decide. Do you all want to write a paragraph, or you want to form subgroups, or how do you want to do it? I think that's a good idea. I think we should all create a plan that we would like to follow, and it can be from you know one of the other plans or parts of the other plans, and, and be ready to just come to some agreements. So see, see <laughs> sort of take a poll and see where we are on. Basically, yeah, yeah. I don't think we're that far apart, and I don't think that anybody expects the plan to be exactly the, the what they unchanged. Want. Yeah. We approve it. <laughs> well, I, I don't think anyone thinks that they're going to get exactly what they would do out of the entire plan. So, I mean, if we could all just sort of yeah, come to great. sort of like a, I don't completely disagree, it's not a make or break yeah. issue, you know, the degrees of agreement. I wish I could refer us all to this document that I read about this one, on, which I could look up again for another committee I was on. But it doesn't have to be just yes or no, just sort of like degrees of Bob, and I mean, you're absolutely right. We're up to, but the, we're, we're, we exist here in a vacuum. Nobody knows what we're doing here, and to, to get the facts out about this process and what's going to happen, it's very, very important. So the Chamber of Commerce is going to have some meetings with the Joint Committee, just to talk about what you need to do, not about what we're going to recommend, but about public education needs and trying to help people anticipate what's the stuff that's going to come out of the sky about this proposal. So, and I encourage anybody else to, you know, tell people. We need to let people, have people know about this, so. You're not paying attention. That's right. I think that the people on this committee agree that we're, we need to um, build a fund to take care of these problems. Uh, I'm not sure that everybody in the city agrees, and, and that may be, that may not be our job to convince everybody. Um, but I think we're part of the education of everybody, uh, that we should do what we can. I, I, I really agree with John that we should be, I, I, I really appreciate that we have this filmed and people 
you know, if they're motivated to go see it, it's there for them to see. You can't drag them to this information. Um, uh, so, so I think that, you know, we need to talk to our city councilors. They're not going to sit down and do the work that we're doing on this. They're going to take this recommendation um, as, a, as a, a thoughtful recommendation or two. So, you know, I think that we do need to really get to some sort of consensus. I, I think you're absolutely right um, that this, we could just, you know, be a puff of smoke and not really, our work here won't matter if we don't, if we don't come to some conclusion um, about at least two options. There's one thing that I think I can do that might clear up a little bit. I'm a little unclear right now. Am I the only one? You're right. One way or another, we're all going to pay for the commons because we've got to come up with the right amount of money. Am I the only one right now that doesn't think we should show the commons in the, the way we come up with the money? If I'm the only one, I'm more than willing to change the way that I'm thinking right now. If everybody else thinks we should have commons in the formula, then, you know, because the money's got to be there one way or the other, I'm more than willing to change the way I'm thinking about it. Well, what, what did we vote last time? We kind of didn't. We, we didn't said whichever fee way we wound up with was the one. City, which was different than Commons. Yeah, okay, right. Yeah. But am I the only one who doesn't have Commons? I mean, does everybody else think that the word Commons and that part should be in well, the I think, formula? I think what you're bringing up <clears throat> is actually a represent, it's an element of the larger picture, which is there are principles that we want to sort of bring out and, dis and have our consensus or our, our opinions made. Should, you know, do we want commons or no? I mean, Paul sort of laid it out for us in the beginning is, do we, you know, do we want to recommend that an enterprise fund be established? All in favor, yes. And then we move on to the next thing. And, and does, do we want a simple flat fee for residential? Do we want a tier structure? And we can start building the block, the elements of this that make sense, that feel fair and equitable without worrying about the numbers. And then once we have that structure laid out, we can then come back in and say, all right, now, how, did, how, how do you make this as fair and equitable as possible? How do you, is it an ERU? Is it an impervious area? Is it gross square footage? Is it a number out of a hat? But if we do the principles, if we get that done, if we can come up with that, we will have made really That progress. makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Alex? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what's exactly, um, if my thinking <coughs> is that the commons um, is, uh, is really only relevant to decide how much square area you're going to divide up in the city. If you subtract the commons out, then the fee needs to be spread among the remaining, which I'd like to do. It seems to me perfectly rational. Uh, and I, we've come pretty much to consensus that the city is not going to not going to come out that that the, the property taxpayers are not going <clears> to <throat> contribute to this fee through the property. That's what we voted tax. last week. Well, the votes changed to seven to three. I just do want to point out that it's shifted, <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> I shouldn't use the word consensus. <laughs> <laughs> it was closer last week. So, well, it was eight I, to two. I, now it's seven to three. I'm not sure about that because I think you said something that was really helpful earlier, which is this idea that the money's going to come from from somewhere and the way when we were talking earlier about the, the the Richmond configuration they don't have a commons but they but they go in and they exempt what is effectively the commons they just say that's not going to be part of the calculation and so it spreads the it spreads the fee around the rest of the people and and it basically takes the city out of out of out of out of play so you're talking about commons and you're talking about how we're going to treat the city but but it, but the matchup is almost identical, yeah. depending on how you define right. the comments. And we want to define it to exempt right. or not include it. Right. I think it's, that work is actually right. important. It's like, here it is, so, not part of so the So in theory, theory you, can, you can achieve whatever our goal is with regard to the commons and simplify this idea of how we're going to pay for the commons simply by exempting what are the commons and just saying, these things are exempt. The revenue will be raised from these other things. And then, Which is what mine did. Yeah, effectively. Yeah. But but you did, you didn't include the exemption portion of it. Right. It just didn't count them at all. Right. It completely so, ignored them. Just. 
Yeah, I guess I'm. Uh, well, let me ask the committee before I go off on the rail on that one. <laughs> <laughs> no laughing down there, Chris. Uh, we have a person who raised their hand is in the audience, and we said the last time or two that we wanted to caucus amongst ourselves to have so we could deliberate. But Terry has his hand up, and he has also is involved in the joint committee. So, with your indulgence, I would suggests that we li listen to Terry, but only if the committee around this table agrees with that. I move that we recognize... Uh, oh, okay. I don't think we need to move. Well, on. if you want to recognize <laughs> no, no. the way you yeah. do it. Okay. I second that. Yeah, yeah. fine. Everybody All in favor of letting Terry speak. Yeah. Okay. Ever so briefly. So be it. <clears throat> I actually spent the last week working on yet another proposal, <laughs> which uh, we weren't able to pull together. Um, well, we were. We just didn't like the way it looked. <laughs> uh, the, the numbers, we could not get the numbers to work out well. But I did speak in this proposal, the narrative is all done. Um, I did speak in this proposal to the issue of the commons fee. And you know what dawned on me, in case this is helpful? If we exempt the municipal property, then there is no municipal expense. They're exempt. There's no, there's no, in other words, there's no shared expense. There's, they, they go poof, they disappear. We can walk away from that whole commons thing because we address the exact same issue in a different way by exempting the municipality. So we cease to have a, an expense that we need to share amongst everyone because we've, by a stroke of magic, dictated that on paper at least there is no expense in that area. Um, at that point, a commons fee becomes a, a kind of a philosophical construct. Yeah. It's a line item in the total bill that anyone receives, and you could say that 20% of it we will label as the commons fee, but it's kind of a philosophical thing at that point. The total amount remains the same whether that line item is in there or not. I, I wound up despite the fact that I was one of the first proponents of a commons fee, I wound up thinking, maybe it's unnecessary. Thank you. Dan? I mean, the, the commons fee could be used to establish the floor to which we can't go below. Is That was one, you know, that was one of my early thoughts looking at when there was discussions about the commons, is that you can't get beyond that. There is this property that we have to take care of Collectively, that's everybody's responsibility is the commons. That establishes the floor. Mm -hmm. It's I think that floor is too low in, s in some way, but it is a place to s that we could start if we wanted to. I, I promised Jim he could speak some time ago, and I, then I forgot it, so I need to remember that again now. Briefly, just wanted to answer Lou's question. The Clark method doesn't use commons. True. Okay. So that We've been talking about a bill that had a commons fee and a your personal property fee. Uh, what if we had a, the two line items be the infrastructure fee and the EPA fee? I mean, because the EPA fee is the one that you could bring down with credit and also um, it will be very small, relatively. <laughs> um, it will be a lot smaller and would maybe address some of the rain tax issues that we are that others will have to speak to. Um, and then the infrastructure fee is just never going to go away. Go away. Or be <laughs> for city council or whoever we decide makes that decision. But. Unless we want the infrastructure to go away. Even <laughs> <laughs> quicker than it is. Yeah. I mean, fast. I, I think that's a, an excellent idea. Of it. It really establishes sort of a max, you know, right now the EPA, part of the budget is around 20%, which would establish sort of the maximum thre threshold for an incentive of credit that you could get, which, you know, if we're looking for a way to establish something that was fair, that had, that you could argue on behalf of, and actually have some number back you up, that could be it. 
this is, that is one of the things we're going to be running into is, or this is actually won't be us, it'll be that the joint committee and then the city council is, well, where'd you guys come up with this? You know, how'd you come up with 10%? Why is it 20? Why do we only have 20%? How about 40? So. Well, I think that runs into what you were saying. It's two separate funds, and if we're going to give 20% credits, that's, that's 20% of 2 million. Oh, if they do the, if they do the, if they do that work, yeah, right. and we'd have to model that, and it would might it would it might take some research to come up with, you know, what the typical is. Ten percent of people take you know take the time to, to do the the stormwater, yeah. uh, you know, incentives. Mm. I, mean, I, I don't know what the number is. I'm sure it's out there as something that is, uh, you know, you can model and predict, yeah. and then adjust. And if it's if people are really into it. Right. And the rate's going to go up the next year because of all the credits. I can Chris, tell you when I talked to Westfield, only three people had taken advantage of their... <laughs> I believe that. Really? Three <laughs> yeah. people? Three people. They t were treating them on an individual basis because they had never created the booklet that it says online you can get from their DPW. Yeah. I was trying to get the booklet and they had never created it. Yeah. Just You had to go in and work with their engineer and he would go out and inspect and give you up to, I forget what they told me, 75%, I think. I, mean, I can't swear to that. Um, but he told me only three people had ever requested a credit. It was worth $15 a year oh. for them. That's part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. Whereas for us, you know, it starts, it's getting up onto real money. You know, $10, $15 a year. Mm -hmm. not, maybe not worth the time to find the form and fill it out <laughs> yeah. for a lot of people. So. Well, is someone willing to make a motion to either include or not include the comments? Because <laughs> that, that would bring things to a head in a hurry. Should we wait to decide if we want to all do sort of like our own plans and then take it from there? Because then that's taking that off the table. Yeah. Well, we've already done our own plans. Well, yeah. oh, I mean, no, just like our... Uh, it would certainly know. change the plans. <laughs> we <certainly laughs> no <laughs> no no <laughs> we're, we're almost at a point where I think our own coming up with our own set of plans, again, is probably too late. Yeah. You know, I think we have, there's like elements of everybody's plan that we could pull, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and I think it still comes back to that principles discussion is, you know, simple, tiered, flat, you know, if we start making some of those decisions, we'll then pluck out of the plans what makes sense and then, you know, then we'll have a, a blueprint for coming up with a calculation. Well, if we were yeah. trying to uh, identify the, the principles, common seems to be one of those issues that would be in the principles, right? Yeah. Yeah. It seems to me that credits would be one, likely to be one. Exclusions, I guess, or maybe exclusions and credits are the same. I, I don't exemptions. know. But, well, exemptions, fine. Yeah. 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 Something. Cap. Cap. Caps. Which is next on the agenda. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. We're, we're getting to that. Uh, residential, uh, you know, residential fee structure, simple, you know, flat versus tiered versus. I mean, it's actually the the table that Jim had handed out last. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Table one is it just going? Going through. It's all right. Yeah. yeah. I think that was one of the tasks that we had to go through was to take table room and add your notes to it and to do that exercise that yeah. you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that sounds like where we are. Do um, you want to go and, and uh, do the discussion on the caps and then come back and, and see what we want to do about the principles here? Sure. Yeah. I, is it possible for the discussion on plat caps to add a, a discussion on floors as well? That was a new concept I hadn't thought yeah, about limits. before. High and low limits. High well, low limits. Caps, yeah. caps to me means boundary conditions, top and bottom. I don't, you know, whether you cap something on the bottom or on the top is the way I look at the world. So uh, yeah, I would, minimums and maximums of uh, caps in the sense. But, so you can call them what you will. But I would entertain the discussion on upper caps and lower caps. <laughs> <laughs> if the committee is willing to do it that. Like uh, I say let's let's start the discussion on caps. Well, John was talking about the, the big cap at two million. Is that part of this discussion? Too? Yeah, it should be. I mean, that was one of the things that would come up. Absolutely. 
I, yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't really have any rule on what can be discussed. Two million is a recommendation, right? Uh, based on the CDM report, that's not, you know, going to be, uh, you know, effectuated or, or, or whatever, you know. So, um, two million is. I'm afraid, and I think I've said this before, that we're going to kind of sell a little morsel and then, you know, want a big bite, you know, two years from now, three exactly. years from now. And I'd really like to avoid that because that's, that's just kicking the can down the road. And, and I think if we're going to do it, we need to, you know, step up and do it. Chris? There's a, um, <clears throat> there's a, uh, a functional problem with putting a cap on the total budget which is when you project revenues, you're, you're always going to be imprecise and you don't want to be in a position where your revenues exceed your cap um, because then you have an issue of what are you going to do with the extra money. So what, the way you actually get at that is you do projections when you set the rates that get you to where you want to be based on what you think your usage trends from the previous year. I'm think, talking about water and sewers. This is, this is what we look at when we do that. How much you want to raise... And how and how you spread that out over what you estimate your 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 billable thing is going to be. So in this situation, we don't have quite. It doesn't work out quite as well because we're you know we're talking about something a little bit different, particularly if you talk measure runoff in some way, shape, or form. But I think what you do you regulate you regulate the capping of the program through regulations of the amount of increase in the rates you can have. And I would and I would phase that. I, would, I, I wouldn't lock it in into perpetuity, but I would cap the amount of the increase in the projected rate annually for three, five, whatever years. Mm -hmm. so, so we're not going to increase this, barring the collapse of the, the thing, right. you know. You know. Well, yeah, yeah. Even then. And you know, maybe even that then. That gets dealt with. A bond or something exactly. like that. But, 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 you, but you create yourself a trap door for, ex, you know, extreme, extreme circumstances. And then you say, we're not, we don't. We, we will not increase this rate beyond a certain amount over the next three to five years. I like that. Yeah. 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 So it, I, I think you get the same outcome without the, without the, the problems of the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dan? I, and I, I agree. I mean, I think we need that too. But the, uh, you know, a lot of communities, one of the things in, you know, in the, the presentation stuff that Jim had handed out was you know, communities start with a cap to ease it in to the program. So it might take a, you know, the cap would be a phased, rather than calling it a cap, we call it a phased implementation. So the first year might be X, second year Y, and the third year you're at the you're at your max, and then you've got your percentage limits for the next five years, and then it has to go up for some sort of a, a vote. But I think so the way they get around the cap issue is they 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 target below it and work their way up to it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's a way of getting public, ex, you know, of getting more acceptance by easing it in instead of boom, you know, I got a new line item this yeah. year, especially for an you know an institution or a, a business that wasn't planning on an eight thousand or ten thousand dollar stormwater fee. You know, okay, it's two thousand this year. It's six thousand next year. Yeah. it's ten thousand year three, and mm -hmm. then it's going to be eleven thousand, twelve, whatever That's thereafter. Unacceptable. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, both Westfield and Newton uh, in, in, implemented policies, mm -hmm. and both have now decided they didn't raise enough, enough money. Do we mm -hmm. know what their target was? Or do we know how short they were? Why they're raising it? Do we know what the where the discrepancy was? Was no. it million and they raised two bucks or was it you know, whatever it was? I don't, I don't know, know for Westville. I don't know if you know for Newton. No, I don't. I, I didn't even know that they hadn't raised it until Jim said something to me last night. I was all... I don't know the answer to David's question, but I think um, decisions that are made in each community are political. So Westfield, I think their approach was actually comparable to the things that Dan was just suggesting, that uh, you want a system that's fairly palatable and you roll it out, something people can understand that's not going to be too expensive, and then once you start it, then you, then you kind of roll from there. I think one of the issues with Newton, and there were two, one that they weren't raising enough revenue, but also there was an issue of equity with the way they set up their program originally. They felt that a greater percentage of the revenue should be coming from larger impervious surfaces from big businesses and other things. So they were looking at changing to more of an ERU style to shift the equity over um, to a different group of uh, Businesses within the community, so. so, so 
So on that, based on that statement, are we proposing something that's politically palatable or palatable, palatable to the citizens of the city? I think there's a difference. There's two differences. Right. So I don't know what our charge is other than equity, equitable and transparent. Right. So, but I, I don't think that we should undersell this cost so it gets voted in and accepted. And then two or three years down the line, the Godzilla drops down and Bambi's crushed. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the minutes don't need to recommend the demise the of the best Bambi. thing ever. <laughs> Does Bambi <laughs> die then? <laughs> don't know that. It's I got the to picture, be but, but we'll, we'll sanitize the verbiage. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> no. I, th I think that's how the, the citizens feel as these things are rolled out at a small number. What's coming? Right. Would you be up front with the phase approach? And I, that's right, and, and exactly, exactly, because I'm looking at in five years at a five percent cost ex escalator that we really need two million seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in five years. Yeah. Okay. That five percent, you can argue, should be three percent, eight percent, whatever. I quoted five percent, right? But it's significantly more five years down the line, and that's where you get from that three thousand to nine thousand to fifteen thousand. And those bills keep coming, right? Yeah. I. Uh, I think right now, if you're going to talk about setting a cap on this, you have to understand how an enterprise fund works and what's going to happen with the commons. Uh, you can be assured if that $400,000 is in the budget and we develop an enterprise fund, the $400,000 is going to go away. Now, I don't think there's any question about it. Because city council will look at that and they'll say, well, now they have an enterprise fund to raise money for stormwater. Why are we contributing $400,000? They have a fund. But that's now, not the reason. Well, let me finish. Okay. And Bob was right. If we do the commons, the commons is 20% for the city. That's $400,000. So that puts it right. But that has to be built onto the cap. Because that's an already existing $400,000 that they're utilizing to pay employees, to repair infrastructure, and to pay debt on some of the things that are, that are out there already. So there's $400,000 that has to be built onto the top of it. You're right. You know, you, you've got to build this so that it's going to pay the bill. And if it's not palatable, I don't know where we go. Well, if it's not palatable, we won't run the risk that EPA Plus. or somebody makes us do something we want to do, right? I mean, that's the... Plus, there's a fee by the city on the enterprise fund, and they'll, the same with the sewer and the uh, uh, water, we pay a fee to City Hall for their participation in uh, managing the, the Enterprise Fund. We pay what for sewer? A million dollars? Uh, I'd have to look. But it's, right, it's right up there. Yeah, we pay a million dollars for sewer. Do, Back to City Hall. Who does? The and Enterprise, the enterprise fund. fund pays the city to That's manage exactly the Enterprise right. Fund? Yes. And it's a legitimate charge. That's done by everybody. Which is a, which is a reason for keeping, you know, keeping the four hundred thousand dollar that line item already in the city because yeah, it's like it the highway department's not going to go away. No, but the four hundred thousand dollars. But how are you going to fund the highway department without that four hundred? No, it's not the highway department. It's the employees in the sewer division um, that take care of the drainage, yeah. and 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 that's a part of the sewer division payroll. There's that plus the infrastructure payments, right. you know, that repair and so on, and equipment, locks, catch basin covers and ribbons, and debt on work that we've already done. And the point, you raise a good point, I think the budget that Jim <coughs> had originally given us 
that four hundred thousand dollars that was in the city budget got moved in. Um, it was Terry got moved into the enterprise fund column. So, but what you're saying is actually that you actually need to get another fifteen or twenty percent, whatever the fee is, on top of that, just for the city to, to manage this. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And was that included in that budget as well? It was. So that's yes, a fifteen percent line item. Okay. Was it? <coughs> yeah, well, yeah, we had a we had a number in there. It was uh, two hundred and thirty thousand the first year. Okay. Yeah. All right. Of the two million. So, <coughs> if I may briefly, is the, the committee happy with Terry responding again? Yeah. Go ahead. So the, the indirect <coughs> cost covers uh, insu medical insurance, vacation time, re retirement benefits, um, all of the benefit packages for the employees of the department. Uh, City Hall does take a little bit out. For example, the enterprise funds contribute 5% of the mayor's salary mm -hmm. um, with the presumption that the mayor spends 5% of his time <laughs> working on these things. It pays for part of Jim Laurel's salary, part of Ned's salary. So that's a lot of it. In the case of the wastewater treatment plant, that's also taxed by the city. It's a payment in lieu of taxes. But it's a very valuable facility, and, and they've got a fairly big payment in lieu of taxes, which is why their um, indirect charge is so high. Well, I heard a comment from Paul Spector tonight that I didn't expect to hear. The charge that we originally got didn't say anything about taking a vote on whether we recommended an enterprise fund or not. And if I heard him correctly, he asked us to take a vote on that issue. It was actually in there. And actually, David had <coughs> and, the and first couple of meetings yeah, and, well, I missed brought it. us okay, back to I, that uh, twice to really discuss it. So to me, that, that speaks of the fairness and equity issue. Do we believe, as a committee, that is the fairest and most equitable way to pay for these things? Because if we do, we presumably vote for the enterprise fund. If we don't believe that, well, we wouldn't start an enterprise fund, right? Hmm. I mean, so we, I think we have to wrestle with that. That's a really uh, big issue, Dan. We did wrestle with that for two meetings, and I think it was reflected in the minutes that we agreed that uh, establishing an enterprise, I, mean, we, I don't think we need to go back and rediscuss this again. Okay, well, I, but I just want to make sure, because he's looking for that as a... Uh, we can give him that. I think we've already... We've a recommendation. We need to make sure. I, and I didn't go back and look at the minutes. So uh, we need to... I'll take that as an action item to make sure that it's in there. Because if it isn't, he's, he's looking for that. Quick question for Terry, if I could. Uh, in that budget, when we start this enterprise fund, is there... Uh, plans for hiring of more personnel um, that would affect that 400000 Would that be coming? Would the enterprise fund be a separate employer now? I don't, I don't know how that... For accounting purposes, it would be. And uh, we'll need some additional personnel yeah. on the stormwater side once the EPA regulations kick in. Um, a lot of the work on the levy system and the pump station is done through outside consultants, and probably that work would be put out to bid. So, but permanent hires would I, be. I just want to correct that, Terry. In, in this budget, there's almost four hundred thousand dollars in fiscal year 2016 for staff. How much? Four, almost four hundred grand. Storm drain personnel, 2016. Uh, engineering staff, operations staff, billing clerk. Uh, that was existing people. Am I right? Projected revenue requirements. So, uh, to clarify, I think that's yeah. the question you asked. Yeah. Right? yeah. The question was, does it include growth there? Right. I won't, uh, you want to re-ask the question? Just no, no, one. I think that's I think that's right. If we're going to have this two million dollar enterprise fund, without you know picking apart how that's going to be spent, is which, which, which we which we asked and we were told we, we couldn't pick that, apart so, those. Right, right. So, um, the, and we're talking about the four hundred thousand dollars in in the city budget right now. Would the new hires be? 
would the, would the cost of personnel within the enterprise fund strictly come out of the enterprise fund, or would they be, would that DPW line item have to grow to pay for that additional personnel? Is the two million going to be used for uh, materials and, and you know, costs and contracts and that kind of thing, or is it really are we going to start another crew to start handling? No. In, in the presentation I made to you back in the beginning, <clears throat> I didn't address the issue of what what's the city going to do with the four hundred thousand in the future. Okay. I didn't touch that issue. I showed you what we anticipate is going to be required moving forward for expenses in this in this area. Um, and the presumption in that budget was we would assume all of the current expenses in this new fund. Uh -huh. So the four hundred thousand. Won't be goes away. No, no, but can I, can I, I want to ask this? something? Sure, go ahead. So in the budget that Terry <clears throat> presented, there were staff that were being moved over, current staff that do stormwater related work, moved <clears throat> over into the enterprise fund, and then below that there was a, a line item called increase in O&M budget due to new EPA permit. New staff would be added. To answer your question, New staff, operations staff, billing clerk, um, engineering staff, right. 210,000 new is how it was described originally in the first meeting. And then there was some uh, existing personnel that were moved over that David had described earlier just a few minutes ago, somewhere in the $140,000, $50,000 range for storm drain personnel and flight control personnel for overtime was moved over. So it was described as staff moving over from general fund to enterprise fund, new staff being added as a result of new requirements. And all, it, and, yeah. and all in the two million, so that, that we tried to account for that within the two million. Okay. So there's, there's nothing that's sort of missing, we tried to include everything. Right. Well, the question I have is this. If, if this enterprise fund were to exist immediately, and it was for two million dollars, and there's four hundred thousand dollars in the city council's budget. In the next year, not this year, in the next year, if the city council decided to take that four hundred thousand dollars out and do whatever they might decide to do with it, would we then need to add an additional four hundred thousand dollars to the two hundred thousand dollars enterprise fund to make things come out even? I mean, isn't that really the question that yeah, we, no. we need to come to grips with? I believe with? the answer is no. The answer is no. So, so that's that's what I'm trying to get the answer to. That was incorporated into the original budget. Okay. I didn't. Have Our it. central point is that the current expenses expenditures by the city are insufficient to comply with what the Army Corps of Engineers is asking mm -hmm. of us and what the EPA is about to ask of us. And it's also inequitable. Because a big section of the city doesn't pay into it, and they use the service. Um, so the, this new enterprise fund will take over all expenses in this area. The 400000 that the city had been contributing, I think it was a little less, but approximately 400000 that the city had been spending in this area, and that, ex that, that burden is lifted from the city. So, so in principle, their budget could go down that amount, wh whether it does or not. I think it's another <laughs> whole question. Rick. So I imagine in your plan, you you, you incorporated that four hundred thousand as the comics fee. No, actually, we didn't address that four hundred thousand in any way. So where would the comics fee have come from that the city would pay into the into the two million? The comments fee actually, in my mind, originated within this committee. I thought it was kind of a cool idea. But that's in your plan, the comments fee. Yeah, I, right, but it came from statements by Bob Reckman and Dan. And I was thinking, you know, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. And I have to admit, that popped into my head yeah. just listening to our first few meetings. That wasn't in any s s uh, sense reflected in that original budget or in the interdepartmental thinking prior to this group getting together. So if the city contributes to the two million, I'm just I'm wondering that four hundred thousand dollars, that would seem where the city would draw that money to contribute if they're going to fold into the right, which 
I think was the point Bob Reckman was making a little earlier. Right. Like, you know, it's just sort of yeah. switching things around. I recall Bob pressing pretty hard on the comments speak. I don't remember so much that that Dan was pressing that. You, you had mentioned that you thought there was a I shared had, responsibility. I had included it, and it, but it didn't matter, ultimately, well, that's what I was, That's what I was thinking. When I, when I remember going through the numbers, it seemed to me that it was irrelevant. Well, maybe not irrelevant, but... Uh, but that was separate from the city having a contribution. So I actually didn't include the city in the commons. I had, you know, there was city property. The commons were the streets and all that other stuff. The city properties... Okay. Where they, anywhere where the city was paying a utility, water and sewer, was also paying for stormwater. That was how I was looking at it, just from a trying to be equitable. That since they're paying these fees, they should pay this fee too. Easy. That was that was the argument. It's not equitable. Huh? It's not equitable because the money doesn't come I, in I, an equitable way. And it's, yeah, it's true. true. You know, Four hundred thousand. The city is going to have a little boost in money. You're going to get instead of taxes, you're going to get it as fees. So, is there more discussion on caps here? Uh, it says new business reserved for topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate. Uh, uh, this seems to me that the thing that we might talk about is to make a list of what we believe are these principal items. And I had so far on the items of principles, if you will, commons, credits, exclusions, caps, and caps is kind of a, uh, there's a lot more to it than word caps. So you're talking about the rate or the absolute amount, but, but it, I think it, do we want to impose some kind of limitations or envision limitations? Uh, and then I, then we talked about residential properties and, uh, and then I presume non-residential and then I either didn't write down anything or the conversation stopped. I guess I don't have anything else on the list. But what were the other items we had? So the question is uh, should we come to the next committee meeting? prepared to, to uh, 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 say yay or nay on those down that list, or you want to pick just one, or, or what's your pleasure? Are there any that we can address right this second? I, 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 for one, would say that with regard to um, residential, I'm, I'm in favor of some form of tiered structure. By tiered structure, we want two and three family houses. Uh, you could do it that way, or you could do um, square footage. I'm not sure how you feel about it, but this idea that we're gonna we're gonna not all not all residences were created equal. Yeah, for sure. Some houses are bigger than others. That too. I go along with that. So a tiered residential structure. Yeah. How would that work with an ERU system? God knows. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just conceptualizing. <laughs> uh, you'd have, I mean, you could do an ERU that was an average, right? That was somewhere in the middle. And then you'd have a, a factor, you know, you know, if you're between a half an acre and an acre, you're 0.75 of the ERU. Uh, okay, one go below three, one. And then, you know, the okay. bigger properties are one and a half okay. ERUs. Okay. And I, in fact, I think I saw that in... One of the yeah, there is something like that. Yeah. I, that was one of the ones we actually that Jim did for last week, I think. Yeah. I, I think tiers are popular. I, I think yeah. that they, they sell pretty easily. Yeah. People can understand those. Uh, and I really like the idea of a cap on the rate that we're talking about tiers. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
simplified spreadsheet here, and, and what it shows here in the first three major sections are tiering. I mean, yeah, so um, if I could briefly, um, Emery had asked for a, a slightly simplified spreadsheet, which I'm, I'm not sure I accomplished exactly what he asked, but um, what we did is we took out um, several of the commercial bills, and then what we did is we added, if you look at the very top, um, just beyond, uh, just left, just below the average three-family house tiered structure, it says undeveloped land, 10 acres, undeveloped land, 50 acres, and then Grove Food Northampton, and then one family property on a large lot. Those types of properties weren't represented in the last table, so we just felt like we needed to get some undeveloped property on there so you can see how the different rate structures would be applied to those properties. And I handed this out because we were talking about tiers, and I thought it might be handy for you to have it. Well, to go back to the tiering, thing, you I'm sorry, what? Is anybody prepared to make a motion that we do it that way, right. or and just uh, I'd like to hear really a little. Hear either. Right. This is a combination of single family and acre. Yeah, no, but my, the question I wanted to put to you was not so to vote on this document. That's not no. what I was thinking. Yeah. Exception to the yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That said, go ahead. Same. Well, I mean, how it's either. tiered, it makes all the difference. So, actually, I am so close. That my instinct is to off and just go with the you know, that what you really want to have on that I'm that beginning to understand and that, that the one. selling that, explaining that, mm -hmm. that paying for the, the technology mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. measure mm -hmm. uh, square footage on every piece of land in the city may be at this point beyond us. I don't know that. I know Google changes all the time. It gets more and more, uh, more accurate um, with mapping. But the combination of, you know, just tiering single family, two family, three family doesn't make any sense to me. One family house on five acres is much, produces considerably more stormwater than a two family or a three family on 150, you know, 2,000 square feet. So combination of those two makes, makes sense to me. Um, and it, it seems like a simple, Simple. So I get, I'm actually really kind of waiting for uh, for you uh, to make your argument. Uh, it seems to me we come down to the tiered system that moves away from from what's the most accurate, the most uh, most fair way of doing things, which is to measure square footage, impervious and pervious, and to move from that into a tiered system uh, for practical and for all sorts of other reasons is beginning to be reasonable to me. I can see it, but I'm kind of like because you had a dialogue going with Jim on email about the process, and I was interested if you came to a conclusion. No. Yeah. Um, if I could, can I? If you I can, can speak. Yes. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about Terry's new plan for a minute, and he's probably going to not be happy about this. But, um, what we, what we find when we, we've looked at these in, in great detail, a number of different plans, and what, you, what you'll find is that when you have a plan that's based on runoff coefficients, um, you apply a runoff coefficient to large areas of undeveloped land. And what, what ends up happening, which we discovered when we were working on Terry's plan, which is kind of similar to Dan's, the, the idea of the, the runoff coefficient is something that it seems to make sense, right? I mean, that's, you seem to like yeah. it. It seems to make sense at the face value. But effectively what happens when you use runoff coefficients on, on, on different properties is that it shifts the burden for the revenue from, it, it moves more of the burden for the revenue from impervious area to undeveloped area. And it's the nature of the calculation. And what we found was that when we spent a lot of time on Terry's, and that's what fell out of it. And when you look at Dan's, that's also what falls out of it. And um, when we went back, so we were trying to figure out why does this happen? And we, we figured it out that you're applying a factor to very, very large quantities of undeveloped land, whereas the, the amount of impervious land in the city is actually a smaller percentage. The vast majority is undeveloped, right? So even if you apply coefficients, there's a natural shifting of the revenue burden from developed land to undeveloped land. And then when we were researching this a little bit more, 
if you go to the uh, one of the EPA documents, actually, John had mentioned one of the early meetings, it actually says right in there that if you set up this type of fee structure where you're going to apply runoff coefficient to uh, gross area and to, imperv and to impervious area, there's, there's going to be a shift in the burden to undeveloped land. So you have a large lot with a, with a house, they're going to pay a lot. You have, you have a farm, they're going to pay a lot. It shifts the burden over quite a bit. And the EPA manual suggests that you need to, they say fine-tune the calculations. I think Dan was getting to this too, that when you build a rate structure, you make a bunch of decisions, and then you look at it, and then you calculate the fee, and you may think that all your decisions are great, but when you look at the numbers, you're going to be like, damn, Grow mm -hmm. Food Northampton, they're going to have to pay 10 grand a year? That's not right. What was the matter with the decisions? And then you need to go back, and then you look at the decision, and you say, well, why is the cost burden being shifted to Grow Food Northampton? And then you can figure it out and say, well, it happened because of this. So then you review your decisions, and you go back. So the runoff coefficient, it seems, it seems great, and there are ways to make it work. There are other towns that have used it, and there are ways to make it work. But they, ha but they make it work by applying a number and seeing how the bills work out and see if there's, an, if there's an undue demand on undeveloped land. I don't think anybody in this room wants someone that owns 20 acres of undeveloped land to have to pay a huge bill. And you have to recognize that that's the manifestation of your decision, and then go back and decide what to do. One way to do it that a lot of communities, Doug came up with a whole list this morning, it's like a miracle worker coming up with this stuff for me. But one way that communities do it is they make a decision and they say 80% of the revenue, in this case $2 million, 80% of the revenue would be attributable to impervious area. And then you shake down your calculations based on that. And then you take 20% of the revenue requirement of the $2 million, and then you say, well, 20% of the revenue for the requirement is going to come from undeveloped land. And then you apply all your other decisions and factors, your runoff coefficients and everything. Works great. Other towns have done it. But the runoff coefficients don't work straight ahead until you make some decision about the percentage of funding that needs to come from impervious versus pervious. There are other ways to do it, too. I don't, you know, I'm not going to go on. That's one way to make the numbers look at it. So when you look at it, you're like, well, if you have an undeveloped lot, you know, if you get a, a bill about this much, that seems right. And, and then, so it's a whole, it's a process. The thing isn't going to fall out, you know, a fee structure isn't going to fall out of the sky in your laps based on your decisions, and you're going to be like, oh, yeah, this is, this is the answer. You're going to make decisions, and then when you crunch the numbers, you're going to look at them and say, well, that's great, or some of this doesn't seem quite equitable. How do we make some adjustments in numbers to make it a little fair? And, and so that's, that's, you know, what we discovered, because Terry's, plan is very well thought out. It's a great plan. And it's just it's missing this one adjustment because it shifts a lot of the burden to undeveloped land. And it's not, I mean, the reason it wasn't ready is because we would, you know, if we brought it in where it stands today, it would be a huge bill for undeveloped land. And I don't think that is what anybody wants to see. I'd like to make a comment about that. Whether we want to see it or not, the facts, the physical facts are that the runoff does in fact occur on that land. I mean, those are the facts. The water runs off these huge areas, uh, not as much as they do from shingles. And so the physical facts are one thing, and our sense of equity and how to raise money is another issue. And, and so, but we need to understand that, that, you know, if you have 50 acres of land, there's a lot of runoff. And there's more runoff on 50 acres than there is on uh, it's an apartment house. Right. Uh, uh, and that's the way it is. Uh, people get nervous about it, but if you collected it in a vessel, you would soon find out there's a difference. And, and I'm not saying we ought to go tax the, the undeveloped land. Don't miss my point. But but it's a judgment as to where you want to assess the the fees. And I and I don't know the answer to that. But uh. and I also think that the 50 acres of undeveloped land goes back to the commons issue that they share in the common. Whether sure. it's 50 acres, 5 acres, yeah, sure. Absolutely. we're still sharing in the commons good. And I think that's the discussion we've had, why the commons discussion kept coming up, because right. it is the common good. Everybody yeah. shares. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, no man's an island. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly in high wines. <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. So phil philosophically, we need to bring it in. But, you know, It doesn't necessarily need to be part of a calculation directly, but there's a number there that's useful. 
27% or whatever that number we yeah. go with, yeah. is useful to sort of establish that baseline. And this sort of comes, reiterates what Jim just said, is sort of the 80% that is, you know, this is 20% that is the foundational level that we all <laughs> are going to pay. And then everything else <coughs> should just be based maybe on, on, on impervious. And you just don't even deal at all with impervious because one of the issues that I came across is that there are the range of values. And the range of values for impervious are pretty narrow. You know, it's 0.75 to 0.95 or 100 in some places. But the range for undeveloped is everything from 0.05 to 0.7. How compacted it is, how warped, what soil type, slope, all of a sudden it, it really sort of blows apart and becomes very difficult to manage. Whereas the impervious is, is pretty straightforward. So maybe simplifying it, using the impervious as the 80, you know, as the majority of it, and then that 20% commons fee to really sort of make sure that everybody's contributing in some way. Well, the simplest thing is just impervious area, period, and ignore everything else. That's that's it. That's but the, that's not necessarily fair. No, 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 I would agree. I will make, yeah, but that's the simplest thing you could imagine. And then you can just back off from that or whatever. Well, we have tried to adhere to two-hour meetings. And so what I'd like to do is to figure out what it is you'd like to do at the next meeting uh, and decide when that next meeting might be. So maybe just Alex. Well, from my point of view, I'd like to just spend a big chunk of the next meeting trying to find what we have in common, what what we can agree on. And 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 what would be your idea? Of how would you go about it? Uh, we had one proposal that we'd come in with each of our plans, and, and that was your idea. Yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> However, uh, uh, and and uh, advocate for it, but there are many other methods. That's not the only way to do it. I mean, that's just one idea. Well, Alex, are you proposing that we first agree that we are going to establish an enterprise fund, vote, and say? Thank you. So I think we did that. We'll. Well, I agree with that. No, I'm, I understand. I'm not. I'm using that as a yeah. Okay, example. fine. Just example. Like that. I understand. Are we going to? Have caps, yay or nay? Are we going to have a floor, yay or nay? Are we going to have, you know, then go down that list so we agree in principle to some template that then we break down? I, I'm, I'm just. I, I, th I think that the, the that the biggest thing that we need to, to find is a, is this formula for not taxing. Uh, I mean, the rest are sort of, uh, or a lot of those are, are kind of adjustments. To the final figure, but the basis for how we're going to make the bills, whether exactly what uh, what Jim puts so mm -hmm. accurately, the, the uh, balance between impervious and pervious, um, the idea of of, uh, of, t of tiered, I guess, versus science versus uh, politics, I guess, is the two ends. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, if you, you know, are you going to? As Emery says, are you going to uh, actually bill people by the amount of water their property sheds, if you can measure it accurately, or are we going to uh, build a hybrid that includes uh, curing and... Yeah. So the, uh, the issue, Harry's going to kill me probably later, <laughs> um, but one of, the, one of the things that we were looking at was a combination of Dan's method, which used the runoff coefficients, which is a which is a really very good concept. And then the tiers, which Chris had started to mention, is something that he supported. So it was a bit of a hybrid between two methods that we felt dealt with some of the issues um, that each individual method might, might have. So, you know, we could, we could bring that to the next meeting. Um, but maybe um, going along in terms of what the committee had started to do, which was Chris saying, well, I think tiers for residential is a good idea. And then go down to the the different factors that are going to be addressed in the assignment. John? Could we take table one that Jim had passed out? We made reference to it before, go through and just start identifying and seeing what that matrix looks like and then exercise it and see how that plays out. Okay. So the information that um, 
Let me see if you can bring next week would be helpful because that is a hybrid. Maybe if we went through table one and we took everybody's comments, see where the majority goes, yeah. shake it out, and try it. Yeah. You could also do a doodle, a doodle poll, and everybody, you know, we could put all of our, our little factors in and then put them out. Just put it online, make it public. Well, the easy way to do that is put up a big one of these and give people red dots. <laughs> yes. uh. Yeah, set up a survey monkey. Yeah, so it's a, okay. Are we meeting next week? Well, no, we haven't we haven't gotten to that point yet. Uh, maybe we should get to that point. When would you like to meet again? When are you able to meet again? We're going to meet in weekly. Next week's hmm? fine with me. Sixteen. Sixteen. I can't do the sixteen. Is that next Thursday? Yeah. yeah. But we have one person that can't. I don't know that I'm willing to cancel it, but, I'm, I'm, but I want to make sure we have a quorum. Or we'll, so we're, we would be down one person if that happened. I could entertain any other. Well, would the 15th work? Huh? Oh, it does not work for me. doesn't work for you. Okay. doesn't work well, for me. Yes, that works for me. It doesn't work for me. That doesn't work for, for you. So, so we now we, we have a... Uh, I think we should be consistent on the nights. Sure. He can. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm relaxed it's about that. I was just trying to fish around here a little bit. So the 16th? I can meet the 16th. Okay. I can meet the... I'll meet the 16th. Chris? Yep, I'm there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. David? 5.30? 5 o'clock? What? What's your pleasure? 5. I like five. Yeah. five would you, five. Megan, if you can't make it, would you send in your proxy, um, like... Yep. Table one, so we had we know where you are on some of these things. Yes, that's good. Uh, and you can send Location it to Dan. You can send it to me. You can send it to Jim or all three, or okay. by courier, however you'd like it's to do it. Pony Express. Pony Express. <laughs> whatever works for you. Okay. Jimmy, I don't have that last table you're working from. So the next agenda will be we'll work on table one Chris is going to come back to us with some more stuff in advance in advance but, <laughs> uh, but, we'll, but we'll, we'll want to discuss it at the meeting though we'll want to discuss it here yes sir what you else would you and we're going to have this uh, modified uh, hybrid analysis it would it make sense to you know if I set up a, a Google Doc with you know, the one column filled out and people can put in their comments into one document that can then print out next time. I'm happy yeah, that's to do right. that. Sure. That's what I did. I just had that column and just redlined it in. Do you, want, can, do you want to make it a Google Doc and just share it with all of us and we can all add a column? That's, that's that way true. we just get it all on one page. Sure. Right now, we're not doing anything to see else. what other people have. No, it's commencement next <laughs> week. I'm, I'm actually free. Everybody know how to use a Google Doc? Everybody happy with that? Yeah. That would be great. Yeah, and who's, do you want to set that up? Somebody else? Well, how's it going to happen? John, you're, you already got yours set up as an Excel spreadsheet, right? Yep. So you would. That's fine. Yeah. So you're going to send it to all of us? Yeah, Thursday morning. It's going to invite us. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday morning. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ah, you invite us. It's going to come with Christmas <laughs> stuff. Yeah. That a boy. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably get it out Monday morning. I can get it out. That's, 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 that's outstanding. Yes, that would be outstanding. Yes. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yes, uh, uh, we've met here. We've met at 18. I'm, I'm not especially fond of the police department to apply and the Lord Chief Policeman to right. If we can avoid stairs, I would appreciate it. I have to have my knee replaced, and stairs are really hard. Is this okay for people? I mean, it's obviously the easiest to, to schedule. Yeah, right. Perfect, easy podcast. Yeah. 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 So be it. All right. Will that work? Yeah. Fine. Thank you. Is there anything else somebody yes. wants to make? Yes. I'd like to uh, just make a, a quick announcement. Um, I'm part of a conservation uh, coalition that looks after the meadows and areas of the meadows, stewarding them. And uh, 
I'm on the board with Fred Zimna, and he's arranged a speaker um, he has in the past for us. And this, this uh, at the end of the month, we're going to have a speaker talking about levies and the levy system. And I thought it was important to have that on the uh, on the schedule as soon as possible and share it with this with this committee um, because I think you know people need to you know find out about the, the levy system. Fred, if you want. Say anything more about that? I uh, I talked to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the uh, the uh, branch chief for levies for the Northeast region uh, has said that he would come and speak to us 5:29, which I believe is a Wednesday yep. at Bridge Street School, and uh, I asked him to do a public talk on what a levy is, how they're built, how they're maintained and how you live with them. And it's important for us in Ward 3 because we have a levy right there. And of course, Smith College has another levy. So uh, we've been calling them dikes for years and years. And it only has been in the last few years that we realized that they're not dikes at all, that they're in fact levies. And they're sort of special. What would you bring us I'll have a poster. I, I, yeah, I send have us an announcement or something so that we can not so we know about it. Yet, but we will do that. And uh, I don't know, are there any civil engineers at Smith College that might be interested? We actually just went through a whole study for our levy system. Oh. Um, we outlined what's the potential, you know, the risks, if the dam fails, if the levy fails, flood control. So we have a whole three-ring binder. Um, I could certainly invite the person that worked with the engineers to develop that. No, I was thinking students. Uh, they're, they're, they're done. They're done. Nice try, though. May 20th. May 20th. I don't know how much control we have over about what he says, but certainly I think people would be interested in the specifics of our levy and not just the general levy. I mean, well, what's the situation? Yeah, that's, that's a question I, don't, I can ask him what he wants to do. I would assume that what happened is, given how knowledgeable he is, it's it's uh, Scott, by the way. Do you know him, Jim? Mm -hmm. So he's he's just very familiar. Yeah, he's been here before. He talked to him. Yeah. He must know about our levies. Uh, but one of the things, of course, would be there'd be Q and A, and at the end. So I mean, there could be a side discussion uh, during Q and A on our levy and, and what he thinks of it or whatever. Yeah, because I think uh, that would be of real interest. But I mean, I, I haven't got, I haven't worked through all the details yet, so Understand. I don't know. But basically, it's, you know, what is a levy? How it's built? How do you live with it? That sort of thing. Um, and I'll, I'll know more later on. We're gonna, we're trying to get flyers out for next week. Fred, did you mention a time and a location? 7 p.m. Bridge Street School. Cafeteria. So just to go for. More public awareness is, I think, anything that's, that we that's do. Going to be taped. Do you tape your meeting? I'm not. Ta I'm not taping it. If somebody wants to tape it, you know, video, video. I, I would assume uh, Adam Cohn. Adam Cohn probably. I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Let's see if they have public TV there. The local. And the other thing is, I haven't asked him permission. I would, I would have to ask good. his permission. Right, if we He's really want good. people to. I'm sure yeah. he is, but nevertheless, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I, yeah. You call it, you call it Northampton TV. Northampton TV. But uh, are we going to do public comment? Uh, a short one. Well, basically, I looked at the tables uh, that came out last week, 11 by 17 sheets, and uh, a couple things I noticed. Again, the impervious surface and pervious surface, the numbers are all different. There's discrepancies between the numbers between one sheet and another. And I would hope that when you finish this, all those numbers would be cast more or less in concrete and that we would know what the different categories are, exactly what's in those categories. And the second thing that I noticed is that for me, my parcel is a four unit parcel. If you do the ERU feature, I'd like to see the parcel sizes to get an idea that I'm paying more or less a fair price as opposed to being out on the on, on the other end of the tail. <laughs> okay. Either that or put in a tiered structure for the uh, the large residential. I mean, I, I don't know what the parcel sizes are. Maybe they're all about the same size. Very possibly that's the case, but 
Um, I don't want to get stuck on a bottom. Uh, I'm not going to get Other comments? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Is this, is this complete and never